One of the biggest reasons that women look older than they are is that they're still using the same makeup and makeup techniques that they had, what, 20 or 30 years ago. So stay watching this video because I'm going to give you a very simple anti-aging day makeup. Miss the video the last video I did I actually looked at the home facial I looked at doing a salon facial in which the home. is gorgeous I would have to say you enjoyed that didn't very you very much so if you missed that video do check out the link up here and have a quick look because we've prepared Heidi's skin for makeup today another very very quick catch up um, yes many of you know me for the psychology videos um, I actually worked for 10 years as a beauty therapist and a makeup artist. I also worked for um, model agencies and fashion magazines and I would do hair and makeup for that. So um, when looking at this, yes, I, I am not only qualified but experienced in doing what I'm doing today. So, Thank goodness for that. <laughs> a bit of a, a multi-skill and multi-talented. So Heidi, makeup, first of all, tell me what do you currently do, what do you like or not like? Well, I think I'm quite embarrassed to say that my <clears throat> makeup routine is the same that I did 20 years ago and I pretty much think my makeup's from 20 years ago. Guilty. Um, so I would really appreciate some guidance and help on making me possibly look a bit more colourful um, and something that's quick and easy. Yeah, okay. But, and uh, how to apply it. Yeah, and, and also for me to, to help cover up the little panda bags and okay. that sort of thing, I, I'd be really grateful for. Okay. Today we're going to go for a day makeup. When we get nearer towards Christmas, we're going to do the, the evening makeup as well, so we'll be taking it to the next level, but we want something that looks very natural. Okay. Before you apply your makeup, it's really important, and I, and I can't stress, stress this enough, to use a makeup primer. Mm. I can buy makeup primers from most beauty outlets coming in all price ranges and in my last video I did talk again about we're not here to push products or tell you what to use. I'm a great believer it's not the price of the product that makes a difference, it's the application of it and the whether or not you use it. Yeah. The reason you use a primer, do you ever use a primer? No. Have you ever used a primer? No. Have you ever thought of using a primer? No. Have you ever heard of primers? Yes. Okay, that's a start. <laughs> A primer, really, if you think about, you know, a decorator in the house, they would always do a, a primer with a paint or a base coat and then they would do a second coat. They're never going to put on just that simple one coat of paint because it's not going to cover well. Your primer is almost doing that. It prepares the skin. It enables not only the foundation to go on smoothly, but your foundation will also last longer. So today, we're not here to push products. They're not affiliated. There's nothing at all in it for us. I'm simply showing you techniques and there'll be lots of little tips that you didn't realise that make a huge difference to the application of your makeup. I'm excited. I know, I know. So primers. Okay, primer you apply all over the face and all over the neck as well. Don't forget the eyelids. Mm. Yeah, because that also is a place where you will be applying makeup. I often find, especially when I get hot, which is quite regularly, that if I am wearing um, eyeshadow it goes on my top lid as well yeah. would the primer stop that you have an eye primer as well oh okay it's product for everything out there yes yes it would but I think it's also the type of uh, product you're using for the eyeshadow and allowing it to sort of to set right um, so we've applied the primer all over remembering as well a lot of people still apply makeup and they stop at the chin yeah <laughs> We see them out and about. Don't. <laughs> Don't. It's almost like painting a wall and finishing painting two inches before you hit the skirting board. No. <laughs> Don't. Take your primer. You're going to be applying your foundation and yeah. you're going to be going along the neck as well. Really important. Now, Yeah. when we've done the primer, it will mm. feel a little bit tacky. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah. So it's really important you allow that to absorb in the skin. We don't apply the foundation until the primer is absorbed. Applying foundation, okay, there's lots of things that can help you with the application. I'm not going into what foundation to choose, this is more about the application. However, with mature skin, if you're using a very heavy foundation, a thick foundation, it will rest in the fine lines and it will enhance them. People yeah. often think they will cover imperfections, it doesn't. It amplifies imperfections as in the fine lines. So don't use heavy caked foundation, uh, particularly ones that have got like a powdery base as yeah. well they really do show up 
all the flaws yeah. in the skin. So as you mature, you want the consistency of the foundation to be lighter. You can still have a foundation that has a good coverage, but it's still a lighter formulation. So it's the liquid and light formulation. Yeah. Okay. There are different ways of applying foundation. Okay. What many people do is use the fingers. How do you apply foundation? Yeah. I, um, <laughs> I squirt it in my hand and I go like that. And I put it on my nose. I can see you looking at me, Sue. That's obviously wrong. <laughs> and then you massage it all in. Yeah. Okay. If you get your fingers and you go and touch your window or you go and touch a mirror, what's left behind? A fingerprint. Fingerprint, okay. Yeah. When you apply foundation and you dap it, you dart around your face and then think you can blend it in, the warmth of your finger will almost strengthen that foundation on that dot. Right. Okay. And then when you try and massage it in or blend it in, you will always have those areas that you cannot blend in enough. Think about having a piece of paper and a marker pen. Yeah. And you want to cover that piece of paper evenly. If you go dot, dot, dot with a marker pen and then go over the top, you're still going to have those yeah. dots yeah. in there. You may not, you know, shout out obvious, but you cannot blend it in. So don't dot your foundation around mm. your skin. Um, don't use your fingers. I think that's what I'm saying. Um, alternatives, we have the sponge and we have the makeup brush. I like both of these. Um, I can't say I particularly have one that's the huge preference, but the sponge is easier, I think. The makeup brush um, does give a nice uh, application, but for ease and quick as a day makeup, the sponge is the one I'm going to go for. However, your makeup sponge has to be wet. This is a dry sponge. Right. That is a wet sponge. I really. would have definitely used it like that. Hold okay. them both. Yeah. What's the difference? Uh, that's much harder. It's dense. And, and hot and... Dense. Uh, yeah. It's dense, isn't it? It's hard. It's hard. That's lovely and soft. And it's, it, it is soft. Yeah. Always wet your sponge. Also, it, obviously the size. <laughs> Too many people use to make up sponges like that. No, it has, it has to be wet. It will grow in size, okay? Um, having it wet... Um, and I talked about this when we did the cleansing of the skin. You always wet your cotton wool before you apply any cleansers or toners, etc. Because when you're applying the product on your skin, if that is already wet, the product goes on the skin. If you apply your product mm. onto dry cotton wool or a dry sponge, the sponge will absorb the product. It yes. doesn't go onto your skin, it goes into the sponge. Yes. So you have to use so much more product. So if you apply cleanser onto dry cotton wool, the cleanser will absorb into the cotton wool before it goes on your face. Use twice as much product and it isn't as good with application. Um, foundation. Heidi's brought her own foundation. We're not going into testing colours and finding the right colour. It's just purely about the application. Um, That's actually a tinted moisturiser. Okay. Uh, Brilliant. I, funnily enough, I tried the foundation mm. and it, was, it, it made me look older. Yeah. Because it did show my lines more. Yeah. It, it is. The, the beauty cream, the BB creams are, are great. Mature yeah. skins, just go a lighter. Just yeah. go for a lighter consistency. Um, we know how you apply it normally. Let me, let me give some hints and tips. Now, let's go in again to decorating a room. If you're going to decorate a room, imagine you've got a plain wall and you've got your makeup brush. Yeah. Your makeup brush. You've got your paint brush. Yeah. And you get loads of paint on it and you start at the top corner. Yeah. What's your problem? I don't know, Sue. <laughs> Is it just proves <laughs> not plan? <laughs> Where to blend it to? Oh, okay. You're in a corner, okay. you've got nowhere to take that paint. Oh, okay. Right. So if I start and say at the top there, she's going to have a harsh line of foundation around her hairline. Right. So you always start in the middle and blend outwards. Because what we don't want with foundation are those harsh lines. Yeah. Too many people are still only taking the makeup there. We don't, we're going to take the makeup and we're going to blend it outwards. So if you imagine this, this paintbrush for a wall and you're blending out and you're yeah. flicking the paint, you almost want to go, so you've got paint, it goes thinner and thinner, and then back to the natural wall. And that's the key word. We're wanting it to look as natural as possible. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm just going to start right from the middle and I'm working out. Now, what I'm not doing as well is going near the eyes at this stage. Okay. So I'm blending the foundation... the tinted moisturiser that Heidi has here and wherever we're actually going we're flicking outwards now going to the hairline here I'm not going in the hairline particularly because Heidi's got her hair tied back you don't want to see foundation in the hair the mature lady will have natural highlights should we call them <laughs> natural <laughs> highlights 
You don't make up going into the white hairs. It's not a good look. So you, 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 you're flicking the foundation outwards, never stop at the jawline, and then we're flicking it down the chin. So if Heidi was out and she wants to lift her head up and someone sees under her chin, there should not be a demarcation line. If it's a good match in colour, it should just blend. Yeah. Yeah? This is the secret tip, trick. Your skin is covered in fine hairs. Yeah. If I get them, you yeah. see, I yeah, can yeah, get yeah. hold of them. Oh, yeah. And I can pull yes. my skin. Yeah. Very, very fine baby hairs. These hairs grow like tiles of a roof. They grow and they lie flat on the skin like that. Yeah. So if you imagine you're painting foundation onto the skin and all these hairs flatten, when you move your face and the hairs move, what's going to happen? The, the foundation, well, there'll be gaps. There'll be gaps. Yeah. So you also ah. need to go up, go against the grain ah, of the okay. skin. So you're moving all those very, very fine hairs. Yeah? Yeah. And then finally, the yeah, last thing you do is always you go back down. So you're smoothing them down. So you don't get that look that's a bit like bum fluff. <laughs> yeah? yeah? So you're going Not up. Not a good look. There is, there is a lot of things out now about shaving the face. I heard that. Yeah. I don't know much too much about it. No, I, I don't. have a look into it. But... And of course, one of the things that happens with ageing as well is we can get more of the hairs mm. around the mouth. So it's also really important that your makeup isn't too heavy around the mouth area because it will highlight. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look there, Heidi. Look at me. Okay. I'm looking round. Yeah. That's blended in really nice. What we have to do is remember, okay, cream on cream, powder on powder. Right. Okay. So for example, if I now applied a loose powder all over your skin. Yeah. And then I applied a cream blusher on top of the powder. Yeah. What would happen to the cream blusher? It wouldn't work, would it? You, it would mix in with the powder. Mix, yeah, it would. Yeah. So if you're going to use any cream products or cream-based products, you always apply them cream on cream. So your foundation's a cream-based product. Yeah. So we're not going to put any powder on if we're using cream. But if you want to use a powder product and you put a powder on top of a wet cream, what's going to happen to the... What's it going to work? What's going to happen? It's not... Yeah, it's going to clog. It's going to clog. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So if I went now and applied a powder eyeshadow straight onto the eyes, it wouldn't go on smooth because oh, okay. it's, it's on a wet, creamy product yeah, in the yeah. foundation. Yeah. It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be smooth. Yeah. So if I was going to use a powder eyeshadow, I would now go over the face with a loose, translucent powder to mattify the foundation. Right. It forms a great base. Your powder eyeshadow goes on top. Okay? But because I want to use a cream, it's a very simple makeup, this, because I want to use a cream foundation, a, a cream eyeshadow, we don't, need to put up, we don't need to apply powder. Right. Yeah. This is um, Trini Woodall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a brand called Trini, and it's great. And she does these, she calls them, I think, teapots, and it's just a series of pots, and yeah. they're all different, and you buy your products. I like it because I found this is the easiest, quickest way to apply foundation, uh, makeup. And I think it's something that, you know, you can put things in your, in your bag and yeah. take them out, whatever, yeah. whatever it is you Trevor. need. So are they all eyeshadows? These are all eyeshadows right. at the moment in here, yeah. I've just got a range of natural colours, but I'm just going to do a base. This is a very neutral base. Yeah. So what this neutral base will do, I'm going to use it over the eyes. Um, when building up eyeshadow, we always start with the lightest colour. And not only that, you also want to do a, um, a base on the eyes. Yeah. Okay. Foundation. I did say don't use your fingers because you get dots. For this, it's simple. I want to show you simple ways. You can use your fingers to apply this cream on the eyelids. Okay. Yeah? So I'm gonna show you, just close your eyes. And what I'm going to do here is apply a nice cream base. Now this base is now going ho over the whole of the eyelid. Okay, close your eyes. So all that does now, it's, it's light. Now this is where there's another rule that you can think of. If you want yeah. to make anything stand out and look brighter, bigger, yeah. we put light on it. If we want to make and hide anything, we place dark on it because okay. it makes it look less. Right. So what we've done with the eyes, mm. first of all, is our base, we put a light base over the whole of the eye because that makes the eye look open and bigger. What we're going to do is close the eye down. Yeah. Eyeliner is a very debatable subject, particularly with more mature women. Um, 
I would say stay away from the black eyeliner. Okay. And because you're fairer, I would definitely stay away from black. With me being darker, I can do exactly the same as what I'm going to do with a black eyeliner. Because what we're doing, we're just trying to give a little bit of contour. We're trying to give a little bit of depth to the eye. And yeah. no, nothing more. If we use an eyeliner and we go all the way around the eye, okay, it's going to close the eye in. It's going to look small and very tight. So the idea, if we look into the camera, the idea with the eyeliner is we only go in no more than two thirds of the way from the outer corner towards the middle. On no, the bottom? On the top and the bottom. Oh, on the top. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, only, we never go more than two thirds. So we're never going to take the eyeliner all the way. If you're 17, 18 and modern fashions and modern makeup, they can get away with it. They've got, mm. you know, the long lashes, the, you know, the youthful eyes, tight skin. It's different. Oh, oh I know. <laughs> we, we, we were like that once, Heidi. Once. We were definitely oh. like that once. Okay, so if you close your eyes, all I'm going to do now, now what we don't want to be doing is pulling the skin taut either, but I'm just trying to get, I'm just pulling up from the eyebrow very, very gently, and I'm just going to get a little bit of the eyeliner. I'm almost trying to paint the lashes. Wow. Open your eye again there. Just look straight on at me. You see a difference. Now close your eye again. So again, I'm not going in more than two thirds of the way into the eye. And all this is doing now is just giving a little bit of definition on the outside of the eye. Now, if you can, Heidi, just look up and try and look right behind your head. Okay? So all I'm going to do here is literally just paint just along the lashes, no more. And I'm just going in on the bottom, the outer third of her eye. So what you see where you've got the eye with the eyeliner on, the eye actually looks bigger than the eye without the eyeliner. If you place the eyeliner all the way around the eye, you will actually make the eye look smaller. The eyeliner, if we want to set the eyeliner, is a cream product. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So if we want to set that, we need to now put a little bit of shadow over the top of it because the powder will set it. The powder sets anything that's cream based. Okay. The brush I'm using for this is just a fine brush. Okay. The idea being you can actually paint a line with it. Okay. Yeah. So what we need to do now is take a dark brown eyeshadow. We don't want any loose shadow to come off. Can you see there? I just tapped it yeah. and the blob came off. Yeah. So we don't want anything going. Um, and I'm going to just paint very gently on top of that. And we're, what we're doing, we're smudging it. We're just smudging that line and taking the outer corner as a bit of a side V. So if you can imagine that sort of thing, I'm going in the, just above the crease and going down the corner. So I'm just very, very lightly, there's hardly anything going on there. I'm using a tissue here because the tissue is preventing any of the loose bits coming down. And if you see the tissue goes from the corner of the eye up towards the corner of the eyebrow, that prevents anything falling down because if the shadow falls down, you're going to make the eyes look a bit more droopy and they're going to come down. So we just we take We don't that. want droopy. The brown eyeshadow. The one I'm using here is this colour here, and it's just a, a sort of, I say, a chocolate brown, to be honest. Again, we don't want to anything too, too much. Tap it off. What about matching eyeshadow to eye colour? Is that important? Oh, gosh. If you want to really enhance your eyes, yeah. there's, a, there's, there's, there's certain colours you can use. Blue eyes will pop against orange. So if you use the autumn colours when you've got blue eyes, your eyes will really pop. If you use blue eyeshadow with blue eyes, you're going to lose the blue. Yeah. So blue eyeshadow with brown eyes. Could give it a pop, as long as the brown are like that warm brown, that hazily brown. Right. But even things like greens, it's almost if you've got a bit of a contrast, they stand out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Whereas today, for the day makeup, you're just neutral. doing... Yeah. Remember the colour thing, light and dark. Which one makes things recede and which one makes things stand out? Dark, recede... Light, light stand, stand okay. out. Yeah. So a lot of people have got like hooded eyes, so they yeah. feel their eyes are very heavy. Yeah. So if you have got a hooded brow, yeah. Okay, and you put light on it, are you going to make it look more hooded or less hooded? Less. Uh, we, we need light. Actually, on oh, the. Oh no, dark. So where you've I'd got always the... put light there. So what you're doing is going, look at me, Felicia yeah. Beacon, stand out. So if you put if you put light on where it's where it's bulging. Yeah. You're going to make it look... I've been doing it wrong. No. So if you want to hide it, put a dark on it and it'll make it recede. It becomes okay. less hooded. So what we need to do, if you've got anything you want to make recede very subtly. So where Heidi here, so Heidi feels that she's got her eyes are... Oh, just open your eyes again. 
So she feels she's got a little bit hooded there. Yeah. So what we want to do is very subtly apply some, some darker. Now we don't want to go to the chocolate brown because it's going to look too dark. It's a day makeup. You still want to be subtle. Something else about makeup. For the day, you don't want makeup with glitter in it. No. You don't want anything with shimmer or no. sheen or glitter. The thing about glitter is it attracts your eye. And if glitter falls in any of the creases, you will age your eyes considerably. Yeah. So once we get to a certain age, we really should avoid glittery, sparkly, sense. shimmery eyeshadow. You don't know. You want, you want matte. And again, don't apply it too heavily. If you want it to have a darker, a darker feel to it, buy a darker colour and apply it lighter than getting a shade and think by applying more and more and more it's going to go darker. Yeah? Close your eyes. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking this. Just open your eyes a minute. If I, if Heidi opens her eyes, just look straight to the camera, opens her eyes, we're taking it to where the lashes touch the brow bone because that's where we want the eyes to look a bit more receded. Close your eyes again. So I'm just going to take a colour. Again, it's a very neutral but slightly darker tone. And then it's a bit of a taupe, I'd call it. Maybe a taupe sort of colour. So we're just taking it along that brow and then the outside, of course, we're keeping it up. Your eyes for me there. Lovely. Okay. And then again, I'm taking a clean brush. Okay, clean brush. And all I'm going to do is just go over the top of it. Just collects any loose particles, stops them from falling, helps blend. You don't want any harsh lines with your eye makeup. Whether day or night, you don't want any harsh lines. Okay, that's lovely, Heidi. So you wouldn't go out, would you, without brushing your hair? You would always finish off the hair on the face is exactly the same. Your eyebrows, give them a brush. Eyebrow brushes are very cheap and easy to get hold of if you haven't got one of these like this. Um, if not, a baby toothbrush, mm, which is the idea. same. Yeah. So we're going to go backwards, first of all, because any bits of foundation ah. or eye makeup that's gone in it, always brush against okay? before we brush up and we tighten. So we're going to go against the grain, then brush up and go and put it nice and neat. If you remember, you had powder on powder, cream on cream. If you're going to use a cream blusher, now is when you apply it. Okay, you can apply your brusher because you've got it on foundation, so it will glide. It will, it will, it will. Yeah, smooth. Yeah. If you're going to use a powder blusher, if you apply a powder brush on your foundation without applying a translucent powder underneath, your powder blusher will stick and you'll get that dark, blodgy shadow. Particularly with mature skin, you really want something very, very light and you only want a powder dusting. If yeah. you apply it too heavily, all those compact powders, they will cake inside five lines and it will age you immediately. So I'm just going to get a very fine dusting, okay? So there's not an awful lot of this in the actual pot. Yeah. I can bring more up, but yeah. we're not taking an awful lot. And again, all we're doing, again, starting at the nose, okay? And then brushing very, very gently. We're just giving it very, very fine dusting. Remember what I said about the fine um, hairs on the face? Yeah. Brush up. Yeah, lift all those hairs up. If you left it like that after brushing up, you would look furry in the, in, in the sunlight. <laughs> you would have a low fur. So now we then need to always finish by brushing down. Okay, and that will flatten those fine lines. Okay, and don't forget, down Chin area but as well. that's not adding any colour. No, no, no. That's colour at all. just purely, almost like sealing it in. It just is just a very fine distinction. It, and it just, it almost sort of mattifies the foundation. So if yeah. you're putting powder on top. Yeah. Okay. When it comes to blusher, um, what you're thinking about is the same principles: light and dark. A lot of people apply it on the cheekbone. Apples. Apples. I was also, people yeah. Said, yeah. Are you supposed to smile and? Yeah. If you apply it on the apples. Right, on yeah. the cheekbone, blusher is generally lighter or darker. Darker. So if you apply it on the bone, what you're making, what's happening to the cheekbone? It's going to disappear. It's going to recede. Yeah. And you don't want that. You yeah. want it to... So what Pop. we need to do is shadow just underneath the cheekbone. Yeah. Now, if you look at the cheekbone here, you can feel, you can feel your cheekbone. If you mm. push if you push your finger up like, like, yeah. like, like that, actually flat, yeah. and push up, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can feel the, the cheekbone. Try it yourself. Where you've got your cheekbone, you want to just... If your shadow slightly underneath it, of course your cheekbone's going to look more raised. If you apply your blusher on your cheekbone, you're making it recede and you're losing it. This is just a, a nice mm, neutral. Nice. I don't go for the, too much of the pinks and the reds. Skin you're color. wanting that shadow as well, aren't yeah. you? We're sort of taking, imagine that, that like a letter E. Ah. So for my hairline, one, two. 
So underneath, you don't put it on your jawline because you put it on your jaw, jawline, you will flatten the jawline. Yeah. If you take it under your jawline, so actually underneath, yeah. so on this bit here, underneath any jowls or these that you have, <laughs> you're actually, the dark is making a chiselled look. Yeah. You want it to be, so it's a chiselled look. And the very fine, we're not going dark at all. And we're just taking slight under the chin, underneath these the chin there. So we've almost finished. All we need to do now is the mascara and the lipstick. Heidi's brought her own. Um, so I'm going to let Heidi, there's a mirror there, I'm going to let yeah. Heidi apply her lipstick and her mascara herself. Do your mascara first and well, then you can do that. For me, as my age increases, my eyesight decreases. So I couldn't actually put my mascara on in a normal mirror. I actually need one of the really super strong magnifying Really? Um, mirrors, which I have brought. Take your sponge that you've had before, you've got a little bit of the residue foundation yeah. on, nothing more, and you can just, again, very gently, sort of just tidy up any loose areas going under the eye. Okay, and mm. lipstick. And there we have a very natural day makeup. Do you like it, Heidi? I love it. Thank you, Sue. Yeah. Still youthful, but still bright. And what's nice is we like to feel a little bit made up without yeah. being too much. Yeah. What we're going to do uh, near Christmas, I'm going to do a nice evening makeup yeah. and show you how to do that. Yeah. So if you've enjoyed the video, please do like, comment and share it. Let us know in the comments box if you've got any questions, if you've got any ideas for videos that you would like to do in the future, any makeup or skincare questions you yeah. have, do fire away and let us know.